Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to perform some HTTP POST requests using the ASP32. As we will see, uh, it is very easy, like it was to make some HTTP GET requests, which we covered in the previous tutorial. Uh, so, moving on to the code, uh, I'll be briefly uh, recalling this, this part, uh, because we have already covered it in previous tutorials. But basically, we start by including the Wi-Fi.h library, which will expose to us uh, the, the API needed for us to connect to a Wi-Fi network uh, and later reach the, the server over the internet. Uh, besides that, we will need to include this HTTP client.h library, which will expose to us a class uh, with all the methods needed uh, to initialize and make the request, uh, the HTTP post request to the server. As usual, I'm going to declare uh, the global variables uh, as global variables the credentials to connect to my Wi-Fi network uh, since uh, this way I can easily change them when needed. Moving on to the setup function, we will need to open a serial connection in order to output the results of our program and then we will connect to the Wi-Fi network by calling the begin method on the Wi-Fi extern variable passing as input uh, the previously declared credentials and then we will pull these Wi-Fi uh, external variable uh, to check uh, its status until it is it corresponds to being connected to the Wi-Fi network with this uh, enumerated value. After that, we simply print a, a message stating that the SP32 is indeed connected to the Wi-Fi network. Then we will handle the the requests on the Arduino main loop. The first thing we are going to to do, just as a safeguard, is that we are going to check if the status of the uh, Wi-Fi connection is still, it's still okay, if we are still connected uh, before performing the actual requests. Otherwise, they will fail uh, naturally. Uh, after that, we'll need to declare an object of HTTP client uh, class, uh, which we'll use to both initialize the request and to perform the actual request to the server. After that, uh, pretty much like we did in the HTTP GET example, we'll need to initialize the request by calling this begin method and passing as input uh, the, the destination URL of the server that we are going to try to reach. Uh, we're trying to reach um, a fake online testing API website, which was the one used in the previous tutorial, but in this case we are going to reach this slash post route, uh, route that when it receives here uh, an HTTP POST method, it will simulate the creation of a resource in the server. Uh, typically, we use the POST method precisely to do that, to create a resource uh, in the server. So, another important thing that I would like to highlight is that typically when we do HTTP POST requests, we want to specify the content type of the body, uh, uh, in this case the content type that we are going to send to the server, because uh, that way the server knows how to interpret it. Otherwise, uh, if we don't specify if it's XML, JSON, just plain text, the server won't know how to do it. So, uh, we simply call this add header method in the HTTP object that we previously initialized. And as first input, we specify as a string the name of the header we want to add. And as second input, the actual content type. Since we are just going to test and the uh, the um, server will always return with uh, the creation of uh, an object. It doesn't matter the, the actual content type, so I'm just using here text slash plane because that's what I am going to send. But in a real case scenario, this would most likely be uh, JSON or something similar. Uh, so we could represent the, the structure of uh, a resource, the resource to create in the server. Later, we can, uh, in the body, we should um, use a suitable. Um, content type. Note that we can call this add header method multiple times to add different uh, headers. In this case, we don't need any any more uh, header, but um, we can call it multiple times. So now to do the actual post request, we simply need to call this post method on our HTTP object uh, and pass as input the actual body of the request. In our case, it will be this simple string. It doesn't matter since the server will ignore it. As output, uh, it will return a numeric code 
pretty much like in the previous example. If its value is lesser than zero, then it means that an internal error has occurred in the SP32. Uh, if it is greater than zero, it should be a standard HTTP code, which is the response from the server. So we'll do this check to check if the value is greater than zero. It means that the request has succeeded. Uh, at least it, it uh, we were able to to contact the server. And then we we'll, we want to get the payload, the response returned by the server by calling this get string method on our HTTP um, client object. Basically, it will return the content as a string, and we will then print it here uh, so we can analyze it uh, in a minute. Uh, furthermore, we will going to print the HTTP response code just to confirm uh, what was returned by the server. The else condition for this is simply printing a message indicating that an error has occurred while sending the post request and we will also print the actual uh, internal error code so it uh, is easier for us to, to debug and understand why it has failed. Uh, in either cases, uh, after we do all the, the handling of the, the response uh, or in the other case the error, we will call this end method on our HTTP client object so we can free all the resources. It's very important to do this call. Don't forget to do it as soon as you don't need it anymore. So, uh, just to finalize, this is the else condition for the initial verification that uh, we are still connected to the Wi-Fi network. Uh, and we'll print here a message so the user knows that something, uh, uh, some problem has occurred and uh, we could not make the request because we are not even connected to the Wi-Fi network. To finalize, we'll do a small delay, 10 seconds delay between each iteration, so we have a delay between sending each request. So, uh, I've already uploaded the code with my my actual uh, Wi-Fi network credentials. Uh, it's already here in the serial monitor. It should be uh, uploading. Uh, it, sorry, it should be doing the, uh, the request already. I have it connected for a while. As you can see, there are plenty of requests already performed. But let's analyze one of them. Basically, as we can see here, the server has returned the 201 HTTP code, which means that uh, it's the code for a resource has been created in the server. Um, the, the server will always return this, no matter the content of the post, because it's a, a testing endpoint. <coughs> I'm sorry, it's a testing endpoint. So uh, it will always return this value. As the actual content, we have this JSON structure. Uh, it, this is the body of the response returned by the server, which is simulating uh, the returning of uh, the ID of the resource created. It's always 101 or 101, because there aren't uh, resources actually being created in the in the website in the in the server. This is just for testing, uh, and so they are always returning the same the same JSON structure. And basically, this is it. It's very simple, as you can see, like the, the HTTP GET request making the HTTP POST request is pretty much the same. Uh, and will be this will be a very useful tool, because if you are using your uh, ASP32 to interact with the server, you will most likely be creating some kind of IoT measurements or getting some configurations. And both uh, these APIs to do GET and POST requests are very useful and very simple to use. Hope you have enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching.